Hey guys, today's episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast is presented by Ronald Blue Trust. You can check them out at ronblue.com. Wisdom for wealth, wisdom for life. Their advisors apply biblical wisdom and technical expertise, helping their clients make wise financial decisions to experience clarity and confidence and leave a lasting legacy, whether it's financial retirement and estate planning, whether it's investment management, bill pay services, charitable giving strategies, Ronald Blue Trust is the place to go, all based on biblical principles. Check them out at ronblue.com for all of your financial needs, ronblue.com. Welcome to the Sports Spectrum Podcast, the intersection of sports and faith. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hey guys, welcome to the show. I am Jason. This is the Sports Spectrum Podcast, bringing Jesus into the sports conversation. You can check us out at sportsspectrum.com for all of our content, all free resources, articles, devotionals, podcasts, sportsspectrum.com. That's the place to go each and every day. You can also email me directly if you have a guest idea or some feedback on today's interview. Jason at sportspectrum.com is my email address. Jason at sportspectrum.com. Now, today on the show, we have a little bit of a different type of podcast than we normally have. Our friends at Ronald Blue Trust are great partners with us. And we thought, why don't we do an interview where we can kind of talk finances with a professional football husband and wife? What does that look like from their perspective? And what are some of the lessons that they've learned? that you can implement into your own life, in your own financial needs, in the way that you budget, in the way that you save. There's some good stuff here. Chase and Hillary Daniel are our guests. Chase Daniel, of course, the quarterback with the Los Angeles Chargers. He's backing up right now uh, in many ways, one of the top new quarterbacks in the NFL, the young quarterbacks, I should say, in the NFL, and Justin Herbert. And Chase Daniel is a great role model, a great mentor to a guy like Justin Herbert. We're also going to be joined today by Connor Lowry, who is a financial advisor with Ronald Blue Trust. I really like this conversation, a little different than what we normally do, but I think there's still a lot of of takeaways from it, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Chase and Hillary Daniel, Connor Lowry, they're our guests today here on Sports Spectrum. Let's take a listen. Chase and Hillary Daniel, welcome to Sports Spectrum. How are you guys? Great. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Chase. Thanks for having us. Man. Absolutely. Good to see you guys. Connor Lowry is also with us from Ronald Blue Trust, a financial advisor with one of our great partners. What's up, Connor? Good to see you, Jason. Absolutely. Good to see all of you. Glad we were going to have this conversation. Chase, let's start with you, uh, NFL quarterback for 13 years now, but there was a time when you were an undrafted quarterback coming into the league and not quite knowing what was going to happen. Where were we going here? It was... Was finances, was planning, anything like this on your mind when you were coming into the league? Yeah, no, I mean, it was, uh, it's been a crazy ride so far. Like you said, we just finished year 13 and, um, man, it was a long time ago to think, think that, you know, it started in 2009 as an undrafted free agent, obviously wanted to be drafted, didn't get drafted. And, um, you know, back then league minimum was, you know, two thirds less than it is now. However, my main focus when I got into the league was not necessarily, you know, I'm going to make all this money. Hey, I need some financial planning. It was like, can I just make the team to <laughs> even get at that level? Right. Um, and so that was sort of my first, you know, type of goals. And then, you know, you play for three or four years and then you start um, getting into, you know, hopefully God willing, some, some second contracts. And, and sure. if you were to do that, then I think that's sort of when, you know, the financial planning um, aspect of it came into into play. And Hillary, you come in the picture a couple years later, mm-hmm. and you guys are dating for a little bit, and then uh, end up getting married in 2014. Take me to those times when you guys were just figuring out, you know, if you wanted to pursue a relationship, right. and then you know, serious relationship, eventually ended up getting married. Was finances and anything like that a discussion point during those early years? Not at first. I think when we first started dating, I was working in Northeast Kansas as a morning news anchor. He's down in New Orleans playing for the Saints. We, uh, we'd we been friends since college, but we didn't date then. Mm. So we're just like in the excitement of this long distance relationship and when am I going to see you next, whatever. And in 2013, 
our relationship had gotten serious. We're ready for the next step. But it's like, I'm not going to move to some random city. I'm not married to you, whatever. And we really actually started kind of getting more serious, even just as a couple with our faith, because I'm like, I'm going to leave this in God's hands. If we're supposed to be together, that'll happen. And I don't know how. Well, you know, the night before free agency, he signs with the Kansas City Chiefs, which was in my viewing area, basically, as a news anchor. I'm like, all right, this is happening. So that's kind of what started us on the path of even more serious discussions. But even then, we were still just dating and thinking about, you know, we're just so happy to be in the same city. Mm. And then when we got engaged, that's when I kind of got a behind the curtains look at kind of here's where our positions are. Here's where we're invested. This is how much we have in savings, cash on hand, all that stuff. And it was overwhelming for me as a 23, 24 year old girl. Like yeah. I was making no money in TV. It was all like, I mean, I didn't know what was going on. It wasn't uh, alarming, but it certainly really even wasn't something I was really focused on. After we got married, that's when we were like, okay, we're married. We want to do this the right way. Let's bring the Bible back to, I mean, not that it wasn't the forefront. It absolutely was. Yeah. But now with our finances, that's when we really got serious about tithing and making sure that what already belonged to God and we believe that was getting back and sowing back into his kingdom. So that kind of was a changing point for us was just getting married and doing things the biblical way mm. that kind of set us up for where we are now. Yeah. And Chase, that's something that you said uh, you were talking to me earlier about. That's a, a household and a, and a foundation that you grew up in this tithing foundation. Yeah. And, and listen, we, we both um, come from you know very strong Christian families with very um, strong values. And that was one of the first things that... You know, my dad taught me was the value of a dollar mm. and the value of money. And and listen, I'm I'm not naive enough not to think that it's it's not being talked out talked about out there by enough families. And and you know, Hillary came from the same background. Her parents are very strong Christians as well, and taught her about money at an early age. So I just think we had a a very um, you know high respect for for money. And just like you know, my dad working um, so hard and just like instilling that hard work um sort of factor in in me and and same with hillary's parents i mean it was just like something that you know from an early age we were very um you know cognizant about mm. connor you're with us here from Ronald blue trust when you hear their story that young story of you know a guy like chase coming out of uh, college into the nfl and like not even thinking about a plan in place and even when him and hillary were coming together and just started dating what comes to mind when you hear about the that early stages of when they were getting together in a relationship and how that's you know played out with the role that you have? Yeah, what stands out to me is that we all have some sort of financial baggage, uh, financial history, whether we grew up with a lot or little, uh, whether our parents talk to us a lot or little about it. We, we observe our parents uh, or whatever that situation may be. And so... We all come to the table with some amount of history, expectations, fears, whatever it may be, as we begin to go into a deeper relationship such as marriage. And so what I love to hear is that they actually started to talk about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. The world puts pressure on us to get money perfect, and no one does it perfectly. Mm. But the first step to, to moving towards that is talking and I think we, as Chase mentioned, not enough homes are talking about it, but let alone you think about, you know, statistics about uh, divorce rates and what are the, one of the top reasons is money. Yeah. So just the fact that they both wanted to come to the table together and talk about it is huge. Chase, when you first uh, get to the NFL, obviously you're young, but as you start being more established and you sign that contract with Kansas city, that was a big moment for you yeah. getting that second contract. Um, you end up and you stayed at Kansas City for a while, but then it was Philly, New Orleans, Chicago, Detroit, and then L.A. this past season. It's a lot of moving parts here. And, you know, it's a not-for-long league, the NFL. Yeah. So you don't know. You, you hope that you would be there next year and the year after and keep playing and have a team. But it's very – it's an uncertain life that you – have chosen as a profession, as a quarterback. None of us listening, unless we've been NFL quarterbacks, <laughs> which aren't many, mm -hmm. can relate to that world. But we yeah. can all relate to the uncertainty, mm -hmm. to maybe yeah. I lost my job during a pandemic. I don't know where my next job's coming, so I have to place my faith and trust in God, but certainly also be smart with my finances. How did that evolve for you? And then I'll get to you, Hillary, too, because I think from your perspective, it's also a big deal. 
as you were going from different cities yeah. and kind of a little bit of an uncertainty with your with It's your a great job. question. You know, and, and when Hillary and I were talking about this a while ago, we sort of view our, you know, really my career in, in two sort of sections. The first part, if you cut it right in half, we were with two teams for seven years, which okay. is insane. Like that stability, it, from stability from NFL standpoint. <laughs> is like yes, it is. awesome. Yeah. You know, awesome. And then you go, the, you know, the next six years are four different teams. And really, we're on our fifth. So it's like it's it's sort of crazy from that aspect. Is like the stability part was early in my career before we had kids. Before <laughs> we had kids, so the instability was the second part where we've had a ton of kids. So I think um, it's it's really just strengthened us um, not only as a Christian uh, you know, like couple and, and married together, but just from us together as being like best friends. Like we've been through so much together that you know the normal person really wouldn't. Um, understand and and you know the NFL not for long league yeah. um, you know we've been so blessed um, you know God willing to play 13 full years we're going on our 14th and it's been a it's been a wild ride but I think you know when we started really focusing in and strapping down on our financials it was probably like the first kid mm-hmm. when the first kid was born Preston our, our four and a half year old boy that's when we're like, all right, listen, it's no longer just about us. Like we have another humans yeah. person <laughs> on this planet to take care of. And so that's really when we started getting, um, you know, a lot more serious about it. And uh, not just like day to day investing, but like a plan for our family for generations. You know? Right. Because it's such a short window, right? right? I mean, yeah, you've got 14 years. So you've actually, you know, that window is much longer yeah. for you than the, maybe the average football player, yeah. but you don't know that. No. So, and it's still a short window. You're going to play for 14 years and then that's your career and you mm-hmm. retire. Yeah. Maybe if you get to 40 years old and you're retired, right? Which yeah. is so weird to say for, weird. I mean, I'm 48, I'm not retired. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. But you'll have earned most of the money, if you will. Hopefully you'll have a great career after during that time. Yeah. So you kind of have to gauge it differently, right? Hillary? Oh, totally. Uh, if you think about it, you're, uh, you are earning a lifetime's amount of money, depending on what you do after in a small window. So if you think about that, that window as a time to just spend and not have a plan and just kind of live whatever. You're not tracking anything and just enjoying this windfall, if you will. Uh, you can get yourself into a pretty serious situation financially. And I think a lot of players end up in bad situations and, and not just in, in the NFL, in life in general. We're in such a culture where everything is at our fingertips. You want something, you can order it. It's easy to kind of lose track of like what so you're true. spending, what you're doing, where that money's going. Yeah. Uh, so in the NFL, it's magnified. You have to really think like, I am earning uh, money now and it's it's easy when it's coming in in large quantities to be like, spend and let's get that new car and let's go on that trip and let's do this and that. And that's all fine, but you want to make sure that those seeds that you're sowing are healthy and that you are establishing a a financial Mm. kind of foundation that will last you not just your lifetime but hopefully for future generations and that's just not even talking about giving and sowing back into the kingdom you want enough room to be able to do that too you know tell me the importance of giving and i'm going to get to connor in a second to react to that but tell me you mentioned giving so i want to make sure we talk about that and the importance of that yeah um you know it was always um a priority in our in our life um you know growing up same with hillary's family and and we just um you know hillary probably came from a more legalistic standpoint um from giving and 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 we were you know, the Daniel family is more like, hey, this is what we feel like we should do. But we came together, we prayed about it, we talked about it in pre-marriage counseling too. Like, hey, mm-hmm. this is how we're going to, to live our life. It's going to be 10%, you know, pre-tax. And this is just, you know, if we can give more, we will. It's just, it's it's us sowing back into the kingdom. And there's other causes that, you know, are clear to our hearts, but that's something that we've always, you know, held, held really, you know, it was close to our heart. Yeah. And I think people think like, oh, I have to make a lot to give a lot. And that is really discrediting God's ability to multiply. You know, if you have uh, $10 to give, like you don't know, you're limiting, you're putting a limit on what God can do with that. So it doesn't matter if you're making $10 million a year or $100,000 a year or $30,000 a year. Like I was in Topeka, Kansas, working as a news anchor. God can use that money and do so much more. Uh, And sometimes people think, well, I'm not in a position to give because I'm not even saving enough. And that's where I think you really have to look internally and even work with someone to help you look at kind of what's coming in, what's coming out. Like you can do more with what you're given if you have a plan, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Chase and Hillary Daniel are our guests here on Sports Spectrum. We also have Connor Lowry, who's with us from Ronald Blue Trust, and they're 
you know, here representing our show today, their uh, advisors apply biblical wisdom and technical expertise, and they help their clients, like Chase and Hillary, make wise financial decisions, helping them experience clarity and confidence. They want to leave a lasting legacy, and you can learn more at ronblue.com. Connor, when you hear their story, and there's relatable things, I think the spending, not knowing where your money's going if you're not paying attention to it, is a big one. But then there's other things that maybe our audience can't relate to because you know, they're an NFL couple, if you will, but there's a lot of what they said that can relate. Can you kind of share a little bit of, of that and maybe what our audience, I think, as they hear their story, how it can relate to them? Yeah, I think there's two things that stick out to me, one being financial, one being life. Professional athletes are going through this huge transition between trying to have a career, which is more like an experience than a career. Yeah, They are possibly getting married, possibly having children, Meanwhile, they could be traded tomorrow and their whole life uprooted. Yeah. And so they're doing all of that in their 20s and 30s. Meanwhile, there's all this money coming in. There's big material ramifications of good decisions, bad decisions, plenty of pressure on them to do the right thing. And so I, I, I get it. It could be hard to, to understand or relate to, but we all in our 20s and 30s have a lot of change. Mm -hmm. we're, we're evolving not only as our own individual, but maybe getting married or having a family. We might be changing jobs multiple times as we try to get into our eventual career. And so that is, I think, a, an area that we can relate to. Uh, the other thing is just simply put, if we don't find, if we don't give purpose to our dollars, our dollars will find their purpose out. And say that again, if we don't give purpose to our dollars, our dollars will find a purpose out. Yep. And what I'm getting at is that regardless of whether you're a professional athlete or not, most of us, if we're not paying attention to it, are spending anywhere between 25 to 50% more than we think because we're not paying attention to it. We don't pay attention to the $18 to Amazon and the $24 to Target. And then, you know, you're doing... Uh, 24. 25. I mean, come on. Um, you but, have a wife and three kids. Venmo, <laughs> right. Disney about the Plus. One time, right, right, right. First Netflix, half of the day. Yeah. Yeah. But there's all these expenses. And, and ultimately, people are always curious about, well, how do you become wealthy? How do you get rich? And it's really simple. Yeah. Spend less than you earn and do mm -hmm. it for a long time. And so if you do that, do that for a long time. That is a principle that translates across the board. That will set you up for, for success. And I think that's really important to hear is that, yeah, it, it seems easy for the professional athlete, but they're also planning for a 50-year-plus yeah. retirement. Right. Right. So, exactly. yeah, it may look like they're saving a lot of money, but they have to because yeah. they don't have this set-up career for 40 years. Right. Yeah. Hillary, um, why is a Connor Lowry – from Ronald Blue Trust important for you and for, for Chase. And it's it's for us, it's more than just the X's and O's, the dollars going in and out. That has been so crucial, really, like he said, to track that stuff. But also Connor and the Ronald Blue team has been a a biblical sounding board for us in areas outside of finance. There's so much that comes into play when you're in the professional athlete world. You're moving. You're, you might need to hire domestic help in the sense of a nanny or whatever because yeah. your husband's gone all the time. And what are other couples doing? What are they spending on this? How are they approaching whatever that topic is? And, you know, we can ask other friends and whatever. But when I go to Connor, I'm like, I know that he's pulling from 130 other examples that aren't that different than ours. And he can kind of give me like, here's the heartbeat of kind of whatever that is. And so not only is he giving us, you know, here's a financial advice or whatever, it's like life advice. I mean, I call him all the <laughs> time and I'm like, all right, here's the situation. What do you think? And it's even different than like calling mom or dad because yeah. that's still like a biased third, you know, he's a third <laughs> party that is, that cares for us, but he's going to be like, here's what the Bible says. Here's what your peers are doing. Here's where you're at. Let's like figure out a solution, you yeah. know? Chase. I mean, it's the same thing, I, you know, for, for us, um, you know, um, there was something that we've been using a, a certain guy for a long time, but he was more of an investment advisor. And when Ron Blue and, and um, you know, Connor especially came in, it was wealth management. It was all encompassing the fine tuned details that, you know, professional athletes might need, whether it's taxes, CPAs, real estate, businesses, license, trusts, what, whatever it is, it's like under one roof. 
And, you know, for us, we looked a long time and there was, there was none other, there were no other firms that did what they did that were biblically sound. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so for us, it it ended up being a pretty easy decision. And we, we started every meeting, not just like, okay, here's where we're at. Like we open in prayer, we're looking at scripture and not just because we have to, but because that's truly where we are building our foundation. And then we get into all of the nitty gritty. It's like, you feel even more secure in your choices when you know that you're doing it the right way. Yeah. Chase, as we wind down, um, I was just thinking about your 2021 season and being around a guy like Justin Herbert, who had just a fantastic year, and he's got such a bright future ahead of him. I'm sure that big contract's coming, and there's be financial decisions that he's going to have to make that's yeah. best for him. But if he's coming to you, and I'm sure he came to you yeah. with a lot of advice and, and looking for mentorship and, and guidance, what would you say to somebody like him or even just somebody – who's in that early stage like you were when you came into the league about what you know now about being uh, the way you have been and what you've learned with your finances. Yeah, there's, there's a couple, you know, first would be just, um, you know, hire the expert, hire the expert in the field, even though it might cost a little more upfront um, for actually very good, sound biblical help um, or or just person who you trust and you know, who's going to get the job done for you. It's worth it. Whether it's a massage therapist or a trainer or a financial advisor or an invest, whatever it is, hire the expert. And the other one is like pretty practical. Like just look at your burn rate, right? How much are you spending of your total income? Keep it below 10% Mm. and you're good and you will be good. You know, there's other things that, um, when guys come in the league, especially rookies that are, um, just you know, wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, as as we like to call them. Um, there's so many other things and expenses. Um, you know, league minimum six hundred thousand dollars. Well, you know, if you're playing in California, fifty-three percent of that after is gone. Tax is gone. Three yeah. percent to your uh, advisor if you're if you're um, your agent. If you're doing an investment advisor, that's a cost. If you're buying your mom a car, that's a cost. All of a sudden, you're you're down. 80% of your money. Um, and so it goes really quickly and a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah, that's good. Well, I appreciate the time, Chase and Hillary Daniel. Thanks for being here on the show. Connor, thanks so much. Ronblue.com is the website. People can go check out to learn more. And we appreciate all of you for uh, taping the show. Thanks so much. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. And many thanks to Chase Daniel, to his wife, Hillary Daniel, and of course, Connor Lowry from Ronald Blue Trust for joining us today on Sports Spectrum. A lot of good takeaways there. There really was. It was really cool to sit down in person with them, talk through uh, some of the different financial questions and needs and budgets and even the uncertainty, uh, the trust factor in working with a financial advisor like Ronald Blue Trust. We Listen, we trust them as great partners with us. They wouldn't be a partner on this show if we didn't trust them. So appreciate that conversation. And again, you can check out ronblue.com. To learn more about our great partners, Ronald Blue Trust, ronblue.com. And thanks to Chase and Hillary and Connor for joining us today on Sports Spectrum. We also appreciate you for tuning in as well. It means so much for us and, and to us. And if you do us a favor, click that subscribe and that follow button on whatever app you're listening to this podcast on so that you could never miss an episode. It just comes right to your phone, whether it's Apple, whether it's Spotify, whether it's Amazon Music, whatever it is, uh, you can subscribe right now and never miss an episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast. Thanks again for tuning in. We love you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. Sports Spectrum.